Now myself, of course, I was a bit of a hardliner sometimes. So sometimes they would complain and say, oh, when Isuk Pahad is not in the meeting, then it's so much easier talking to you. <laughs> and I would come back and i say, hey, I heard what you said. <laughs> When you are in exile, there are times when the light of the, at the end of the tunnel is very, very dim. You always felt that you were very far away from home. I held leadership positions, both in the Southern Communist Party, because I was on the Central Committee and Politburo of the party, as well as the uh, National Executive Committee of the ANC. The advantage was that you had a great amount of time to read, to study, to discuss, to debate, to get involved in all of these discussions, not only with your own comrades, but also with many other people. It was a wonderful, wonderful opportunity to be able to meet representatives of communist parties from all over the world. And so, exile gave you this opportunity, if you use it properly, to broaden the scope and the extent of your knowledge, not only about your own country, not only about your own movement, but about the revolutionary movement in the world, about how other people struggle. And so the question of the readiness to make the supreme sacrifice for a revolutionary cause wasn't restricted to South Africans. So you learned very quickly that there were very many other parties and movements that were facing similar and sometimes even more dangerous conditions of struggle. And so in that sense, exile was a very difficult period in one's life, very complex sometimes, um, very debilitating sometimes because you didn't know whether you were going back home, but at the same time very, very, very enriching in political terms. Can other people benefit from my experience? Yes. I think they can benefit a great deal from my experience. After we came back from exile in 1990, we had to build the ANC into a mass movement. We had to build the South African Communist Party into a powerful legal party. You had to help COSATO to, to become the formidable force that, that, that it had become. And I think in many ways we did succeed in bringing together these diverse experiences, which then helped to make the movement a much better organization. In the course of the negotiations, you also had to take hard positions. But we also had to learn to listen. And obviously I will admit that some of my comrades were better listeners than I was. One of the things people ask me, I say, listen, there must be a willingness on the main protagonist to make some compromises. There must be a willingness for those who think they will be the victors to be ready to say, even if you're going to win an election, there are certain other things that you have to give, that coming into power doesn't mean concentrating all your power in one basket. Uh, anyway, you learn very quickly that power is much more diffuse than that. So I think that in that sense, if you like, we did very well. <laughs>